Okay, this assignment is uh, ionic column A zero one. <laughs> excuse me, A zero one. And uh, you will create your own file here when you open it up. I have to make a copy. You don't have to do this step. All right, let's go over some basic concepts of uh, graphics here. Let's go to the shape tool. Under shapes in the first col or first yeah first column in the second row, there's oval. And just draw out an oval like that. And here it is, it's selected. These are called handles around this that allows you to resize it. If I click over here, it's deselected. And if I bring my mouse over it, it gets four crosses, uh, four arrows, I mean. And that means it's selectable, and I can click on it and select it. Uh, the handles here, uh, make it bit bigger or smaller, however you like to do it. There's even a free rotate button here that allows you to rotate the circle or the oval. Go ahead and um, while you have it selected, there's a couple properties you want to think about and that's stroke and fill. The fill is the inside color. Uh, that's controlled by this paint bucket here. I can change it to whatever color I'd like. On the outside uh, is border color and right next to it is border weight. I can make it a little bit thicker to see what we're doing here. And so you can see there's a border property and a fill property. Go ahead and delete that and now make a perfect circle. And the way you go about doing that is to hold down the shift key while you draw out the, uh, pardon me, object. I just had some root beer. So I'm burping. And I'm going to go ahead and remove its uh, border color. So I'm just going to say make that transparent. So I just have a, whoops, a gray circle like that. And I'll make it red. And if I want to resize it and maintain its perfect shape, hold down the shift key while you do this. All right. Okay, go ahead and copy and paste that. And when you paste it, do know that it goes two to the right and then two down. So if I go up two and to the left two, I'm right where I was. And so uh, if you lower this just a little bit, we can see we have two here. Change this one to yellow. All right, so the second object that I made is uh, on top and that's the order of how all this works so uh, say i did a third one and made that one green i'd get something like this now this is uh, you know i made this one first then i made this one next then i made this one i can mess with this layering it's called order and arrange and while this one's selected I can go to Arrange, Order, and I can send it all the way to the back, and it can be behind everything now, behind the red one and the, the yellow one. If I wanted to bring it back just a, a layer, maybe try to get it in between here, what I could do is undo what I just did and um, move it back just one layer, and that is Arrange, Order, Send Backward, and that'll go back one layer, all right? It's kind of interesting. So anyway, line these up like a stoplight. And you'll notice as you do this, there will be a red line that shows up. And that shows you that your uh, the horizontal one, excuse me, the vertical one shows you that you're lined up uh, in the center here. You know, let up right there. And then also as you move up and down, it will show you, hey, these eye bars will show up that show you, tell you that, hey, you're exactly the same distance apart uh, here to here as you are from here to here that kind of thing. Alrighty, and so these are all lined up and what I want to do now before I make a stoplight is just to make the box part of this. So what you do is you take a, uh, a rectangle, this guy right here, and draw a box over the three lights, right? Now of course when you let up it covers everything but we can send it to the back. Arrange, order, send to back. And then while it's still selected I can make that a black background and I have something like this. The next thing I want to talk about is group and layering, or group and uh, ungrouping, excuse me. And so right now these are four separate objects, and as I try to select more than one, it really can't let me do that. I can only select one at a time. One of the ways around that is you take the black selection tool and just draw over parts of all four and let up. Now all four are selected. 
And what you can do is go to Arrange and choose Group. Now as I resize it and move it around, uh, I'm holding down the Shift key while I do this, uh, it stays all as one piece, okay? Maybe make this a little bit smaller. And for the remainder of these directions, I'm just gonna do a rectangle for a pole. So I'll start a pole right here, make that black. And then maybe a nice oval to do a patch of grass right here. And make that green fill. Don't need an outline. And I need to send it to the back. So I have something like that, right? Okay, so let's get on to the assignment. And that's recreating a drawing of an ionic column. I need another slide, so I'm going to hit plus right here. And I'm going to move this to be the second slide. And what I'm mostly interested in is, is this first slide right here. So you're making what's known as an ionic column. It's one of the three orders of architecture in ancient Greek times. Let me move this to the center. And I'll make that fancy sometime later. And here's what we're trying to draw. So if you go back into here and go to this website, this is the University of Rhode Island. It's a university. And this was for a 101 class a long, long time ago. And I take you to this page here where this is the final drawing. And if you're not sure what an ionic column is, it's this. It's what's known as one of the three orders of architecture. And it describes the top of the column. And before the Ionic, there was the Doric, and then there was the Ionic, and then there's the Corinthian. It's all feathery, Doric, Ionic, Corinthian. And so we're just trying to do a simple drawing that would be, could pass for something passing like that, and that's what he came up with here. here. There is a main menu, you can watch uh, him walk through all these, but I'll be that for you today. So here's how we start this. Uh, we wanna take an octagon tool, which is this stop sign one right here, octagon, and draw out a fluting here, uh, something like that. The fill is up to you how you'd like to do it. You can use a gradient or whatever you'd like. But what I would tell you to do next is we need five of these. Okay, we're drawing um, this part right here five of these. And they all need to be the same size, so that's a really good idea just to copy-paste. Command-C, Command-V, or Control-C and Control-V, depending on what kind of computer we're on. All right, there's two of them. I need two more. And then lastly, one more. So uh, that's uh, the fluting of the ionic column. This actually adds strength to that same way uh, soup can has ridges like that. Now we need a rectangle to go behind it to, to serve as the column itself. So we do something like this. And send that to the back, of course. And of course, you can give it any fill that you'd like. You can be creative in your colors. I'm fine with that. All right, so now I would probably tell you to group this. So highlight with the selection tool all six objects and group it. That way you can resize it and it'll all behave the way you want. I may even go thinner here, something like that. All right, move that off to the side. The next part, and again, I'm just kind of working through this menu here, starting the column. We did all that. There's our column. Next is we're drawing what's known as the abacus. And the abacus are these circles here, okay? And ours will be a lot fancier than his. And the trick on this one is to start big and work to the smallest last. So there's six circles, then they're all perfect. So you draw out a circle, 
And, you know, if you need to reshape it, keep it down, you know, keep the shift key down. I'd avoid copy-paste. You'll just have a lot better luck if you make each one one at a time. And, again, you're working from biggest to, to smallest. So the next one would be the fifth largest one. And you can certainly make use of these crosshairs that will show you that you have it perfectly centered. There's no right or wrong answer as to how far apart these should be. Um, but we do need six of them. That's four, I need two more. And again, it's very important to work from uh, largest to smallest. You'll get more predictable results that way. Okay, there's the I6. And what you can start doing now is just coloring them a little bit. And so I'm going to go to the second one I made, hopefully. If it'll let me. Oops, it really won't. There we go. Hey. There we go. And again, you can choose whatever you'd like for these. It's totally your call. Okay, nothing spectacular, uh, but I'll just live with it. And again, you want to group these. All right, so I'm using the selection tool. I drag over all of them, and then I can uh, either go here or right click. I'll just do it this way. Uh, let's go to group. All right, so it's one object. I can hold down the shift key and resize it. Okay. And so it, there's one on either side of the column. And so you want to put one here, and if you look at the drawing, it kind of almost as touches the volute. Copy paste it. You don't want to, You want these to look the same, and then come over here. I think my this part's a little too tall, so I'm going to click on this and ungroup it, and that'll allow me for a moment just to lower this part. Something like that'll work. And then the next thing, uh, and again, if you find yourself running out of room, you can always just group the whole thing. Uh, arrange group. And make it smaller if you need to. And off to the side of that. And if you ever need to make any changes, you can always ungroup it. For example, say in the stoplight, the art teacher is referencing Jimi Hendrix, the wind cries Mary uh, tomorrow, the, the traffic lights turn blue tomorrow. And the teacher goes, hey, you got to change um, this color to blue. I'm like, well, oh my gosh, it's grouped. Well, what you do is you ungroup it. And now you can click on just that object and make it whatever the art teacher or whoever wants it to be. They're blue now. Okay, so if you ever need to ungroup something, you can do it. All right, the next part is um, this giant piece of stone that goes from the top center here to the top of the center here and almost touches the column. Send that to it to the back and you can make it whatever color you want. Uh, I might do a gradient gray or something like that. So there's your, your column drawing and what we got to do now is just label some parts and add some text. So once I've got the whole thing made it's probably a good idea to group it once more. Uh, and you really want to make sure that this rectangle right here is um, even with the tops of these. And now that it's grouped, uh, I can make it smaller still if I need to. And we're now going on to the remainder of the drawing. Uh, looks like it's filling objects. I think he's just doing the volute and stuff. We did all that. Forward and backward. We did all that. Adding text. So what we want to do now is label three parts. Uh, the abacus, which is the top, 
uh, the volute, which is the circles, and the neck piece, which is that right there, okay? So the way you're going to go about doing that, or one way to go about doing that, is just simply use line tools to uh, figure out what you're drawing towards. So this is the abacus. So what I'm going to do is uh, just draw a straight line like that and then take a text box and say this is the abacus. Something like that. It's real easy, real straightforward. Abacus. All right. And again, if you feel like you're running out of real estate, you can always move these in a bit. Uh, the volute uh, is right below that. And so I'm going to move this up just a hair. And I'm going to take this line, copy and paste it. And I'm going to put it about right there. I might move Abacus up and more, some more. And copy paste this. And connect those two. Something like that. A nice tiny little one then. Pull that in a bit. Copy this text box. And this is the volute. Hard with that mouse. Move that over a bit. Whoops. Had that red line tell me I was right and everything. Uh, the last piece is the abacus. Or excuse me, the neck piece. And so I'll do something like this. Holy cow. Too much fun here. Then lastly, we'd ask that you add a couple paragraphs here. And if you want to make the background any color, you certainly could. So the last part is to write less severe and mathematically rigorous than the Doric order. The Ionic order has been had its heyday between the 5th and 1st centuries BC. Without the Doric rules, for scale and proportion, Ionic architects designed a variety of temples and secular buildings. So add all that font to this drawing right here, and that's the assignment. So uh, after you type that in, you refer to this drawing right here for that text. Uh, you can then make this look a little bit nicer, and then uh, perhaps turn in a or place a small picture of a real ionic column in there, uh, at least an image of it, and that might make it look a little bit nicer. And that would be like over here, and you could just find an, uh, one that you could add to this uh, drawing. Let me hit search here. And I tend to go to where it really lives on the internet and then right click on that and say open image in new tab. That gets me this isolated, it gives me the URL as well. So I can right click on this, copy the image, place this in my drawing, make it nice and small. And I would need to note where that came from, so I take this URL right here, copy it, and place that in a small text box at the bottom so that I can share where I got this. And that could be pretty small font. But that way, uh, and if you do Command K or Control K, that'll make it a link. And this is what you would turn in. Thanks.